In this video, we're going to look at 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles and see how that relates to a special case with the Pythagorean theorem. Now, what's so interesting about this is that on first glance, it, it feels like, if you just sketch this out, right, we have a right angle right here, and this is, let's say, this angle down here is 60 degrees, and this up here is 30, it feels like, oh, this side down here will be half of this side because this angle is half of this angle right there. But in fact, that's not the case. It's not the case at all. And you can see that by setting up a simple diagram and extending this triangle this way. So we'll extend a line this way a mirror image or our first triangle. So what that means is again we have a right angle right here and that the angle up here is 30 degrees and so this angle down here is 60. Now what we've done is by doing that is created an equilateral triangle. Let's sketch that out with this pink perimeter. Altogether this triangle is equilateral. And why do I know that? Well let's just look at what we have right here these two angles up here, add them up. It's 60 degrees, which means that altogether this angle, right there, I'll just draw it out once, is 60. And these two angles down here are 60 and 60, which means all these side lengths are equal. Okay, how do we go further? Well, next we can say that this side length, let's call it H for hypotenuse, and this side length are both hypotenuses, what does it mean about this side length down here? Well, that's going to be h over 2. How do I know that? Well, again, we said we had two mirror images of our, of our triangle. So I know that this length right here has to be equal to this length right here. right? It's a mirror image. And that means that uh, altogether, this whole side length is equal to the hypotenuse. Again, just because, well, this was 60 degrees, and this length across is, is hypotenuse, and so is this one, so, so is this one, right? All the side lengths of an equilateral triangle are equal. So if we think of this whole length as the hypotenuse, we can think of this as half the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse divided by 2. That's the first interesting property. If you know the shorter leg of a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, right? If you take that and you double it, you have the hypotenuse. That's a great relationship right there. But let's also figure out how this, this other leg relates to the hypotenuse and this smaller leg down here. And now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Again, the Pythagorean theorem just says, okay, take one leg, square it. Add it to another leg, square that, and that gives you the hypotenuse squared. Well, we know one leg, it's hypotenuse over two. We're going to square that, eventually add it to an unknown leg, and that equals the hypotenuse squared. Okay, how do we square a fraction like this? Well, we square the numerator, and we square the denominator. So h squared is h squared, 2 squared is 4. So now we have h squared over 4 plus b squared equals the hypotenuse squared. squared. Now I want to, I guess, relate or figure out what is b, right? I want to have an equation that says b equals something. And that'll tell me what does b equal in relation to the hypotenuse and the other side. Well, to get that happen, we're going to keep writing the equation. I guess what I'll do is I'll move my triangle here. Down here. I'm just going to subtract h squared over 4 from this side and from that side keep it balanced. And if I subtract h squared over 4 from here, that gets rid of this. And I can rewrite it as b squared equals h squared minus h squared over 4. All I did there was think, okay, b squared plus h squared over 4 gives you h squared. So h squared minus this fraction will give you b squared. That's a basic fact family principle. The idea being, let's say I have, I don't know, 3 plus 5 equals 8. Well, then 8 
minus 3 gives you 5. Same thing here, but with tougher looking numbers. Something here plus something else gives you h squared. So h squared minus this will give you that missing something. It's a basic property that I'm showing right here. So moving on, what do we do next? Well, again, we're subtracting these two, we have a fraction. So I can think of this h squared as 4 h squared over 4. Right, that's a basic subtraction technique. Let's say I had, I don't know, 1 minus 1 fourth. I would change this to 4 over 4, right, to think of it in terms of fourths, and subtract 1 fourth from that. I'm just doing that same thing here. But we also have a variable to think about. So it looks uglier, but we can handle it. So 4 fourths h squared minus h squared over 4. This is, this is like saying 1 fourth h squared. Right, rewrite that. And this is like saying 4 fourths h squared. Now when you have a situation like this with numbers or constants and variables, what you can do is just subtract the two constants. Think of, let's say I had 3x minus 2x. Well that's like saying you, you have 3x's, 1, 2, 3, and 2x's. You're taking 2x's from 3x's, that's going to equal 1x. And notice all I'm doing there, subtracting the two constants, right? And it tells me how many of the variable I have. So I'll leave the variable alone. I'm going to do the same thing here. Here I've got 4 fourths minus 1 fourth. How many fourths is that? Well, that's 3 fourths, right, in terms of h squared. And we're almost done. b squared equals this. So I want to know what b equals, so I'm going to take the square root of everything over here. So b equals the square root of all this stuff. But we can break this in pieces. So you can think of what's h squared, what's the square root of that? Okay, what's the square root of 3? What's the square root of 4? And we can break those in pieces. We don't have to deal with this all at once. So what is the square root of h squared? That's just h. What's the square root of 4? That's just 2. What's the square root of 3? What's the square root of 3? So b equals this, and we would rewrite this probably like this square root of 3 over 2 times h. All I did there was switch the order of h and square root of 3. That's a commutative property. So, and, and then I, I just put that over 2. You'd write it like this because it tells you if you know the hypotenuse, multiply it by the square root of 3, divide it by 2, and you'll have this leg right here. So let's review what we know and we'll show a quick example. If you know the smaller side, if you double that, you get the hypotenuse. Or if you know the hypotenuse, you can half that, and you get the smaller side. If you want to find the other side, right? If you know the hypotenuse, divide it by 2, and then multiply it by the square root of 3, and you get this side. Or multiply it by the square root of 3, and then divide it by 2, and you'll have this length right here. And that's how all these sides tie in together. So let's see what this actually looks like with a right triangle. So here we have our 30, 60, 90. Here's the 90 degree angle. Let's say we know what the hypotenuse is. Let's say the hypotenuse is 10. Well, what do we know? Well, we know the short side is half of that. Right? We said that early on that the that small leg is half of the hypotenuse. So that means this is 5. What's this going to be over here? Well, here we use this formula. Take the hypotenuse and multiply it by radical 3 over 2. So it's We'll work this out, 10 times radical 3 over 2. Now, I can mul I'm multiplying by a half, but there is a half in here. I can think of this as 10 times radical 3 times 1 half. It's the same thing. So multiplying by a half, I can multiply 10 by a half first before I multiply by the radical 3. That's a basic property of multiplication, right? You can multiply in any order, in any grouping that you want. So what's 10 times a half? Well, that's just 5. And then, that times radical 3 is the length of this side right here. So when we're dealing with 30, 60, 90 triangles, you'll see radical 3s pop up a lot. Anyway, hope that helps.